everybody, it's Tamika and I am here with the episode number three in the Loaded Envelope series. If you haven't checked out episodes one and two, I will link them in the description box below. So uh, be sure to leave a comment and like the video. Let me know what you think to be eligible to win one of seven dies that I will be giving away at the end of this series. So thank you guys so much for all of the comments and the love from the first and second videos. I am loving your suggestions. So um, just leave a comment below as to some things that you like to see in a loaded envelope. So that'd be kind of um, a way to interact with you guys. So let's get started. Today is a double because they're both really easy and um, quick crafts. So we're going to do two of them. We're going to make um, a set of bowls and then we're going to make a set of rosettes. So those are just like extra embellishments to load into the envelope. So I am going to get started with the items that we're going to be using and maybe more. You guys know how I work. So come on and craft and chat with me. All right, in no particular order, I just have them sitting up here. Um, I am going to be using some bags, obviously, to be able to package up these things. And then I have some um, centers. This is a uh, rhinestone from Recollections. They are adhesive, and they're really silver blingy, so I thought maybe that would work. Otherwise, we have tried and true bling from the Michaels bin. You need, um, I'm going to use some foam tape. I'm going to see how that works to hold everything together onto the cardstock. It may be too high. I'm not sure, but using some foam tape, I pulled out some of this ribbon. It's adhesive back, but I like it because it's simple black ribbon with a white stripe and it's kind of regal. So, which is what we're doing here. I did pull out some of the Prima Epiphany paper because it does have that black and white feel that I like and um, to be honest the paper studio paper is too thin to be working these bowls with the machine and all that and I didn't feel like cutting a hundred of them and seeing if I can get six good ones so I ended up using this Prima paper um, but we will we will still be using a little bit of the paper studio um, paper collection but I am using this any other black and white simple paper will do I am thinking I'm going to use some of these Tim Holtz or one of these Tim Holtz uh, small talk stickers Tuesday morning $1.49 they come in black and white and it has just a lot of little sayings that you could use um, in black and white sticker strips so I thought those were cool when I picked them up I'm also I uh, did add this to the bling but some black said and bling pearls for some of those flower centers and um, I'm using some black cardstock, and then this is one of the sheets of papers that I'm going to use from the paper studio. This one here, use a little bit of that. And of course, you need your uh, trimmer, scissors, bone folder, scoreboard. I am using a cutting file from the Cutting Cafe. It's a bowl, like a split bowl die. So very, very cute die. I will put that. In the description box I'm gonna set that over there and as for some dies I have pulled out this let me see let me see if I can move some of this stuff out the way so we can get like a clear vision here so I have this die here and I got it from Banggood um, uh, online for store R really fast shipping and it's one two three four it's five dies I'll put the link in the description box but it cuts so pretty. Look at this. And then it's nesting. Look how cute that is. <laughs> it's so pretty. I love that. Great for cars and stuff. So just playing around with it, seeing, seeing, you know, how it cuts and everything. And it cuts really well. I didn't have any problems. Of course, I've cut it several times now. But um, this is a really cute nesting die. And again, I'll put that link down in the description box. I'm using this one again, uh, Sophie's Heart. And this came from Ida. Um, and I used it on the, one of the other videos. It's a really pretty. I love that doily die. Um, another die cut I'm using is this uh, Tim Holtz. Um, what's the name? It's called Baroque. The Baroque die. Just used it for to layer um, as my backing, like packaging. You'll need a circle. Well, I'm using a circle punch, maybe a leaf punch, 
and then I have a heart punch. I have some washi tape on it, but a heart punch, and then a border punch. I got my shimmer and some adhesive, spray adhesive. And I think that's it. So a lot of these things um, you don't have to have, but I just was pulling out stuff and maybe we can use it, maybe we can't. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to start with the rosettes. All right, we are going to start out with some eight and a half by 11 cardstock and we are just going to punch a border all the way around the edges here. Oh dear. I have to do it backwards. I know it's a little odd, but this is the way that I do it. Just going to punch this all the way down to the end. And last one. Okay. And then we're going to take our trimmer. And we're going to cut that down to one inch. Not one inch. We're going to cut it down to three quarters of an inch. So cut like a little sliver of it off. There we go. All right. And then we are going to do it again. So then we want to grab our scoreboard. And we're going to score this at a half an inch all the way down a half inch in half inch increments so half inch one inch one and a half two two and a half three three and a half four and so on and so on so i'm going to get that going all the way down okay and then you want to do the same thing for the other one all the way down and we can move this scoreboard out the way and then we want to start folding over our pieces accordion style heel heel and valley back and forth so just follow carefully the score marks and then every so often I stop and give it a good press Make sure everything is aligned properly. All right, so that's how that's going to be. And then we can go ahead and do the other one. Someone has said yesterday about, um, oh no, the day before yesterday, about uh, the box. It was on the first video. And um, I think they said something to the effect of they wish I had of completed the box on camera, but you know I really was not going to do a tutorial so that's why the box was done but I do have a couple one or two box tutorials I will link those below just in case you guys would like to make one um, to house your loaded envelope let me just make sure I folded that over correctly because I think you do a double little layer here let's see yes all right so you take these two ends and there's two and two you match them up two and two see that two two just match it up just like that so i am just going to add some wet glue on this two panels and then a little bit up here because they are going to overlap at the top too and then i'm going to add the two panels from that side and then just hold that actually I'm gonna get a binder clip to hold it for me and we're gonna work on this one doing the same thing add the wet glue and I will put a link to this as well in the description box let me know if I, if I forget like when I'm editing this video if I forget to add links in the description box just you know mention it down there and I can promptly go ahead and add that but what I was gonna say was I'll add a link to 
where you can get this um, wet glue. Somebody had mentioned it. And it's in the box in the previous video, but I'll add it to all of the videos. All right. So that's all closed. Now what you want to do, I'm going to grab my circle punch. And I'm going to punch. Ooh, I'm going to punch four circles. Out of this black cardstock. And they are going to be the ones that hold all of this together. So you want to pinch that in. Look how cute that is. I love it. So you have them all connected and you just want to kind of ball them in together. Kind of like that. And then tilt them toward your surface. And that's it. I'm going to add some hot glue to that. I'm going to have to bring it over here. Add some hot glue to this dot. Ooh. And I'm going to, oh shoot, how can I do that? Uh, showing you guys. There's the hot glue. I'm going to put this right on over top of that and hold it. Just want to make sure it took, center it just a little bit. There we go. And then just hold it, hold it there, hold it, hold it, hold it. Make sure that glue gets on there real good. In the meantime, I'm straighten out and crease my rosettes. So pretty. So while that's doing that, I'm going to take my other, one of my other black dots and add glue to the center and then put that on the top. Just add some even pressure on that. There we go. Look how stinking cute that is. Cute little <laughs> I love it. All right. So let's do the same thing to the other one. Our rosettes are done. Love it. Really easy. All right. So what I did do ahead of time was cut out some of those gorgeous doilies from that die and I use this paper from the paper studio paper collection how cute are those and then I cut it out in black as well they cut so easily because I didn't I wasn't sure which one I was going to use so also ahead of time I cut out the baroque die that I showed you in chipboard and two pieces of um, white cardstock of which I will be layering together because this is going to be our packaging we're just going to add some a little bit of light embellishment to the rosette and we will package it up and rosettes are such a it's an easy craft but they're so versatile because you can dress them up or dress them down and you can just really stick them on a card and that will that can just be it like you just put a sentiment and really really cute you don't have to do too much all right that's that i'm going to cover the back one as well make sure i got the right way facing the way that it needs to face okay just add some more of this glue around the perimeter here just add this to here slide it this is an old die but it is an oldie but goodie and I have seen it come alive here recently never goes out of style always very useful all right so that's that and so I think I'm going to use that as the base I think that is super cute these glue strings off so that's what that looks like there so what I'm gonna do is this is a piece from the paper collection what I'm gonna do is take this is one of those bottle cap those thin bottle cap uh, you put 
paper in your bottle cap and you put this uh, clear thing on top of it to kind of make it stay. I thought I would put it on top of this jetam because it's adhesive on the other side and then use that as a as a center. How cute is that? I'm going to flip it over and just give it a good burnish on the back. And then I'm just going to cut around it. I think that's super cute. Make your own like little centers or like little epoxy. That's what I word I was looking for. It's an epoxy circle. One inch epoxy circle. I got these years ago when bottle caps were all the craze. So that's going to go perfectly right just like that. How cute is that? Simple and sweet. And I think I'm going to use, yeah, the colorful doily because it's so, so pretty. Right? That's it for that. I am just going to adhere that with a little bit of, actually, I'm going to use wet glue for this because I don't want it to wrinkle or bubble or overheat with the hot glue. I'm going to set that right on top of there. cute that is really really pretty okay and then I'm going to put the I'm gonna punch another little hole another little hole another little circle and do another one for the next one and I'm gonna add some hot glue to the to it and then put this right on top just like that and then I can lay sit this right on top of there how cute is that it's so pretty what a cute and simple embellishment I love it. Okay. And then the next one is this one here. And I'm going to use, let's see, I know I wanted to do this heart punch. And then I have that leaf punch. I can find out what I do. There it is. And let's punch some white cardstock. This is that Martha Stewart punch. I'm going to use the heart punch in here with these little, this pattern paper and set that there. Okay, so we're going to have to use, lose the leaves. So I don't like them. <laughs> I don't like them. But before I do that, I'm going to add um, another circle on top of this black circle here. I'm just going to layer some, um, put some hot glue on it, lay it right on top of the black one. Okay, and then I can add this heart. Really cute. And then right now, what we have, we'll put it together. I'm going to punch another hole so we can get the base layered. Let's start from the bottom and work our way to the top. Okay, so we got the little circle there. That's going to go right in the middle. Easy peasy. I'm going to put some hot glue on the back of this rosette. Line that up center. So that's what we have so far. So pretty. Okay. And then I am going to punch some more of these hearts out. There's four of them. So we can make that a little more sturdy. And we're kind of going to do the same thing we did in video two, two, yesterday's video, and layer some of these hearts together. 
just because I like these hearts. And hearts are all in the paper collection too. There's a couple sheets in there full of hearts. All right. Let's get this one on there. I am all off camera. Okay. And now we can layer the cover piece from the paper studio. Okay. And that's going to go right there. So I'm going to add some hot glue to the back. right up there to the top of that and cut some of this ribbon off this adhesive ribbon is super cute so see that I cut enough yeah and then I'm gonna take this adhesive off and add it to this black cardstock just to have a more stable base and to get the adhesiveness off because since it's going to go right across the heart all right what are my other scissors that I had give that a quick And do the other side here. I'm going to trim down that cardstock a little bit. Perfect. And then add that to the top. Like right, I'm going to add some hot glue right to the middle here. That is nice and sturdy. It's going to sit right on top of there. And then I'm going to grab one of the words. So now we're going to use a one that's the white background. And I saw one earlier. Here we go. It says choose to be happy. And I'm just going to add some. Yep, yeah, that'll fit. I'm going to add some wet glue to the back. Even though it's sticky, it's going on fabric. And I just want it to be able to, to last. It's going to go right there. Choose to be happy. How cute is that? I'm just going to take my heat tool real quick and get rid of all these glue strings. I'm going to add a dot of hot glue. It's a little tiny dot. Make sure that that's held on there. Just a tiny smidge. Boom. Super, super cute. I love them. Look at that one. Je tam, and then choose to be happy. You can put this on top of a card if you have that paper and you are done. So let's wrap that into some a plastic bag and see if we can get a topper on it. if I want to go this way or this way. I want to go that way. And again, I am sealing it at the bottom so that it's easy to pull out the embellishment and maybe the recipient will be able to reuse the packaging. I think I'm going to close that up a little bit tighter, but first let's get the packaging component done. And then I'm going to use this since it's sitting here. So we're going to cut that down. Okay. And then fold it over. you 
cute. All right, let's see what else we can add to that. Okay, I decided to use another die that I got from um, Banggood, and this this really huge multi doily die. It is very pretty. Let me show you um, what it looks like. I cut it out in this. So cute, really cute. So I'm gonna see how that looks. I'm gonna fold it in half. Cuts really nice. Just had my little shimmy on it and it was good to go. Yeah, I think that's cute. Without the without the uh, cardstock. So this is what it looks like with it. You can feel free to add. Oh, wait a minute. Now I now it does look cute. If we add a cute little bow on top of that, because you know I have plenty of these lying around. <laughs> let's see. I'm gonna put this bow together real quick and let's see how it looks. So I'm gonna add some wet, some uh, spray glue to the back of this doily, and then I'm gonna add some wet glue on the inside of these these two black ends here. Hold that there for a second. And then we're going to add the little bow. I have a feeling I am going to use all the bows that Kyla cut for me. <laughs> they are definitely going to get their usage. So here we go. That is the packaging for the rosettes. How stinking cute is that? And depending on how it falls inside the loaded envelope let's see I was gonna say we can make it tighter or smaller in here and that's gonna go, go on the back how cute is that adorable it's coming along or that can even go in here you can even fit it in here I can't get a hold of it there we go and that can just fit right there we'll see we shall see really cute all right let's clean off this mess and move on to our bows all right so this is going to be where we're going to put our bows at and all we have to do is put them together shimmer them a little bit with the shimmer spray and then add the um the center whatever center that we're going to use so I have my hot glue over here ready ready to go and these um, bows are super cute like I remember playing with them for the first time like oh my gosh these are adorable these split how they split so cute and then the tails just add a little glue to that right in the center and like I said you can get these um, this really cute bow die from the cutting cafe really cute and it's just all about getting that deep inset there and then having these puff up and then they are super adorable so let's decide on the flower center so that's that one that's cute. This is my last option because everybody always uses that one, including myself. And then that's the black, the black one. Let's see. Oh, the black one is so cute though. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to go with the black one. It stands out a lot and I love it. And it's perfect for that big center that's in the middle there. Oh gosh, if we can get off my thumb. If it can let go, we can do this. Look how 
cute that is. Stinking cute. Okay. We will spray that. So we can put the rest of these things out the way. And then we're doing a set of six. And if you know me, you already know that this particular, <laughs> this Prima paper pad, Epiphany, uh, that has got to be up there with, oh gosh, like my top five are Prima paper pads. Just, just, wait, let me make sure. Mm, my top four are Prima. Well, four of my top five. Let's get it together. Four of my top five are Prima. So the other one is Graphic 45. And and I I really wish you guys would guess which one that one is. What is my favorite Graphic 45 paper collection? It'll be a little test. I used it a lot. A lot. And to the point where one person was like, if you use that paper one more time, but it is, um, during that time period, I use it a lot. And even the following year, when it wasn't, when it was old, when it was a year old, I still used it. And I don't play that, oh, that paper is from last season. Nope. I use paper, <laughs> I use paper because I like paper. Now, granted, I'm not going to pull out any... 1999 Echo Park paper, but um, that's been dormant for years. But I will use some paper that I fell in love with, like Prima Tea Time, one of my faves, and I still use it. I, I even bought it in digital format so that I can have it forever, forever. So yeah. I would I'm interested to see what what you guys think would be my favorite graphic 45 but I am I love me some um, Prima Divine like all the shabbiest of papers I really really like you just can't go wrong this epiphany is my is one it's up there I've used it on a lot of projects a lot I did like some I used to do Ustream tutorial, Ustreams, or whatever. Not used to. I think I did like two or three. I can't even say. I used to like I rocked Ustream every week because I did not. But it was fun when I did. Um, then I moved to the bedroom because it got cold in the garage. And now I'm back in the garage. But my husband bought me one of those industrial size heaters that that can heat up a whole room so when the winter hits this time she she shall be ready so maybe I said all that to say maybe I will start the you streams again because it was fun to be able to interact with you guys um, live so and but the thing is I um. I haven't done it in a long time. I wouldn't even know what you guys would want to do. Or maybe you just want a question, a Q and A. I don't know. Let me know. If I did a you stream, what would you want me to stream? Would you want a Q and A, which is question and answer? You know, what would you want to know? I am curious. Inquiring minds would like to know yeah so but anyway we're almost done with this one well I am I don't know if you guys are working right now but I am I am almost done and sometimes when the this doesn't get as round as I'd like it I just get a pen or a round object pencil go in there fluff it up make it look cute again and then we're gonna get this this dot, put it on there. And we have one left. See how fast that goes? It goes super quick. Loaded envelopes look look overwhelming. 
trust me I know because when I was doing my first one I was like oh my gosh I probably watched a ton of videos at least 15 videos on um, just different people's loaded envelopes until one I got the gist two I got like what everyone was doing um, and I kind of wanted to stay on that path but I wanted to still make it my own so I can vary off a little bit from that path and you know add my own touches to it which is what I did to the two that I made um, but I was going to say that they look intimidating which a lot of people were saying in the comments like they've never made a loaded envelope and they're going to follow this series and make one but if you start by just breaking everything down into small increments doing a little bit each day like me I'm just doing a a little bit each day during some quiet time the kids are all asleep right now it's not too late it's 10 45 um, p.m. so um, you know breaking it down a little bit each day coming out and everybody's asleep or gone and working on an envelope you know not all the time do I have just a bunch of hours to sit and craft I don't I have I have kids so yeah I can't I can't but I'd love to. All right, so that's that. And we're done with that. So I'm going to take these pop dots and I'm going to split them in half. Three of them are going to be split in half there. And I'm going to add it to the back of here. And. And I like to do this because this is a slippery surface. So what's going to stay behind is the backing. Oh, wait, I didn't mean to do that just yet. Wait a minute. What's going to stay behind is the backing to the pop dot. And you, so when they take it off, it's already sticky and ready to go. I forgot to spray these. So let's get some. Let's see. Oh, my gosh. This sheet of paper that I just looked at, it's so ugly. This is from that pad that I was telling you guys about. I don't know how I got in there. Look at that. Why would I buy that, y'all? <laughs> Alright. Anyway, I better stop talking about this because this could be somebody's favorite sheet of paper and I'm just hurting their feelings. Alright, so got my own shimmer going over here. I'm going to shake it up a little bit. Give it a spritz and then hit it with the heat tool. All right, those are super shimmery. So now, where'd that one go? I can add the hot glue. Oh, no, it's missing. Oh, there it is. To the bottom of this. And like I said, it's double sided, it's that sticky material that's at the bottom, or the slick material that's at the bottom of the tape and I can just put it on here and then the recipient when they get it they take this off and the, it, what will rip off would be everything um, that they can use so to be the adhesive part if that makes any sense so I don't pull the backing off that little backing is just there to hold this in place So I'm just adding off frame, obviously, a little half pop dot, a little tiny glue dot, and then that on the bow. All right, this is what they look like. Super shimmery. Oh, you know what? I just thought I should spray the back of this paper too. Hold on. So cute. I love it. It's so shimmery. So that's that I'm gonna get a bag that is a perfect fit how about that it's super cute dag nabbit all right I cut out one of the sentiments from the paper collection it says have fun enjoy every moment and love it so what I'm gonna do with that is add some because this paper again is it's not gonna withstand I'm just going to add a little bit of glue 
and then I'm going to add it to um, this black cardstock. Okay. I'm going to cut it out. And then I'm going to add this trim, like going across here. I'm going to cut it. Take the adhesive off the back. And add it to the bag. And then we're going to add this to the top. That way it can act as a pull. Um, on the loaded envelope we have the beautiful rosette and then we have the set of glistening bows really really cute great to add to any project and the recipient will like that you've already done some of the work for their project all right guys I will see you tomorrow don't forget to like subscribe and leave a comment check the links in the box below talk to you later bye